So, we are standing around at the end of the second season of the trying to do all of Factorio's achievements on a death world. Did not work out quite so well. Okay, it was faster than the first season. Still not fast enough. We still need to shave about another 20 minutes off the rocket silo. A um, couple, like, obvious lessons from this season that I just wanted to go over quickly. And then maybe some other reflections that aren't obvious lessons but like obvious lessons like make the second power good don't try and don't try and get all the way to nuclear in a speedrun setting with just the one offshore pump of power grid that's not how that works got to do more power grid i think we are going to keep nuclear in the plan especially with like this nice little copy pasteable pattern that is you know decent enough i think the nuclear power is i mean it makes it makes launching the first rocket more difficult because we've got a whole bunch of extra work to do but whatever i'm up for that i yeah the getting the mixed build online didn't really happen we even had yeah things we were we were just dragged around trying to defend in a bunch of different places and these guys are even yeah, do we even have rubber port range on that at the moment? Uh, not really. Things are pretty rough there as well. Yeah, the start of Sushi has, has backed up again, and it was better this season, but still, like, fantastic in the early game, but I think also by the time we give all these upgrades and expect to put all this extra mining through it, I think it just kind of breaks up. Although, yeah, this these boxes are supposed to catch overflow so that it doesn't break down, but also, yeah, when we run out of ore, it does break down. But I think with there's a couple of extra hacks we could put on here, like, even if we put an, an inserter here, that would limit the amount of copper coming out, which means that everything could still get onto this belt and still sushi back to the base. And this is probably only a thing we need to do later on in the run. Like, the, the early... The early, what, three or four episodes were just fine. So I think we're going to keep that sushi plan, but maybe just not upgrade it that much. And then, yeah, starter patches running down, kind of always going to be a problem. Um, I think what was, I think the other major affliction was, yeah, we didn't, we didn't end up leveraging these green chips as much as we wanted to, did we? Maybe we need to, maybe we also just need to leave more space, given that the plan is... Like, some of these bits are fixed. Like, this is... This little section here is... Uh, yeah, the un when, when the sushi is is not sushiing. Um, like, some of these patterns are pretty decent now. And I like the way they get into the early builds. Um, and then, yeah, the and I guess the other reflection is... Like, look at all the materials we have. We have huge amounts of gear wheels and green chips just in these overflows that we don't like we were short of steel as well so if we just allocated the resources better probably could have shaved those other 20 minutes off um so yeah maybe maybe leaving more space maybe making the sushi a little more reliable just working better on allocating the resources we're collecting to the correct things um and then because, yeah, this green chips buffer here was also super full at the time, wasn't it? And that could have just been... Yeah, like, these guys down here, item ingredient shortage, not enough green chips. The the original plan, before we kind of were scrambling to get everything together, was to also be emptying this green chips buffer into this mixed build. Which is also why... Um, yeah, which is why we don't really mind building them up here so much on the run, because we've got a plan to leverage them later. Um, and yeah, overall, I think I was pretty happy with the map. I think I think when we got in, yeah, and they're not not getting enough oil because we forgot. To, I think when we when we extended this mining. When we dropped down this mining and put down all these flamethrowers the first time, I think we took pump jacks but forgot about it. But I really thought that when we got all of this wall in and belted all these six lines of stuff back to the base, that the run would be stable enough. And it really wasn't. It was still just running around dealing with other places that weren't particularly secure. Um, and then also having to go quite a long way to do... I think the plan might be, and this is a thing that other people do quite well that seems to work for them, is just being a lot more secure and locking down everything earlier 
so that you don't even need to worry about the expansions. Um, so, so those are the, I guess, the lessons we're taking into Season 3. I think the other thing I was wondering about is exactly when we make the nuclear power. Because it's definitely still a thing I want. Even though it's a huge investment that doesn't pay off before the first rocket. And I think... Like, I think my rationalization is... Like, all of the pollution costs for this mining happen at the mining. There's not a whole lot of electrical consumption in the mining itself. It's mostly just direct pollution of electric mining drills being a polluting entity. And then also, um, the smelting itself is also, yeah, not electrical at all. There's a bit in the inserters, I guess, probably not that much. But the main electrical load is when we start doing prod mods and huge numbers of assemblers and, yeah, 160 assemblers, large numbers of those having modules in them as well. So the nuclear needs to get online before the mixed build happens, but maybe instead of... Maybe we could do a more normal thing of having an ore buffer between the smelting and the mixed build so that yeah instead of yeah this is where oh wow we didn't have any copper buffer at all it was just we built the mixed build and if we didn't get the mixed build online until we got the mixed build online the ore was just sitting on belts so i think that's something we do differently as well like we grab we get all the ore from the outposts we do smelting we start to buffer plates and then once we're buffering plates, we can go and do nuclear power. And that will give us the clean grid we need to build a lot of mixed build. And also give us a lot more copper that, and also probably iron that we've already collected. Um, yeah, definitely some, some new ideas. I mean, some of this... The next time... Some of these patterns are going to be the same. Like, the red and green science is probably going to look more or less like that now. Um, the blue science is going to kind of happen wherever. I think I like the idea of just splitting off the first of the mix builds and doing it kind of anywhere else and just feeding the red chips into the, the blue science. But yeah, how many... Where is the red chips buffered? Is the red chips also just... Yeah. I mean, you also messed up some of these. It's fine. Um, yeah, and I think also there was a bit of delay between getting this build down and then getting the LDS down and... Yeah, some, some buffer, maybe not like that, because it kind of needs to fit into... It needs to fit into the profile so we can copy and paste it easily. But there was a bit of a delay between getting all the major builds down, when really what we would like to do, especially if we're going to bother with walls like this at all, is lock those walls down earlier, and then just be able to go and build stuff. Um... So yeah, those those are my reflections. Leave your comments telling me what else I'm doing wrong. I guess I think that's the first time I've actually solicited YouTube interaction. Channel growth, good job. And um, we'll come back and do this in season three, I guess. I hope it goes I hope it goes like twenty minutes better. We just need to get the rocket up in eight hours. And then then it's mostly fine. We can just work through the other achievements. But yeah, good lessons.